why Brian will succeed the Night King. Hello, it is me, A-S-D-A-S-D, -A -S -D, again. I'm going to be your ultimate song on Fice and Fire and the Game of Thrones guide. This is my first video and still many, many, many more to come from a series of video analysis and reviews of a song of ice and fire books, chapters, characters, as well as, well as the God TV series. The first topic that I have decided to cover is about Brian and the Night King and the theory that he actually is the Night King himself and how might at least uh, the TV series end. There is an ongoing viral theory about Bran being the Night King. I will summarize it and show in my opinion why this is bullshit and I will continue immediately after that with my thoughts on the topic and the possible ending of the story, at least in the Game of Thrones series. So let's get started. The show tends to somewhat foreshadow its vital moments and that's why a lot of people come up uh, with the different stories because they have nothing better to do and wish to gain profit and social acceptance upon the poorly educated masses. First of all we need to take a look at the abilities that Bran has since he was pushed from the Tower of Winterfell. After the incident, Bran increasingly gains more and more powerful abilities and becomes aware of his powers and finally finds the Tree-Eyed Raven, Brynden Rivers, also known as Blood Raven. He is a man who is a powerful green seer. Actually, it is supposedly to be the last green seer living with the children of the forest. Bran learns that the actual true potential of his powers is still to be released by him if he quickly learns how to. The first of his abilities, Arsenal, is the so called green side. He has a prophetic dreams and visions. The other two are traveling back in time and working into people and animals. He also gets connected to the Werewolf Network when his training begins, which makes him able to see everything that has happened or is happening now. To understand this theory to its full bullshit extent, we need to understand the combination of powers that make Bran special according to it. In addition, to being able to work into humans, not something most, if any, works can do, Bran also has green sight, prophetic dreams and visions. These skills allow him to affect the past, says the theory, and the Hodor scene proved that, and also the Ned uh, scene when Ned Stark reacted at the Tower of Joy when Bran yelled, Father! Father! which is not exactly affecting the past because nothing actually changed and Bran did not work into Hodor, he was only standing there and watching. Now, any future Bran, seeing the terrible end result of the Great War, might decide to try and go back and stop it before it starts, and that's where the trouble would begin. This I will assume as plausible, otherwise I'm not able to continue reviewing this theory. The first idea, that the voices who told the Mad King to burn, burn them all, was really Bran Stark telling him to burn all the White Walkers. Bran saw them rising from the time of Ares II when we Westeros was still united, and he tried to get the king to stop them before their army grew, but instead he drove Ares crazy and he decided to burn his own people instead. Yeah, sure, why not? This statement is the first nonsense of series of nonsense to come. The White Walkers were not even present at that time. There is evidence that even after the events of Summerhall, of course, the White Walkers were starting to get sighted, but too far north and just for short encounters, but nothing serious that somebody would believe and take seriously. And why whisper then to a paranoid king about the White Walkers returning and whisper what he could have done to prevent an invasion at that time? The Targaryens were in a decline without any dragons. To place a wildfire under the king's landing, maybe? To ensure the death of the Night King when he arrives there? How he even knew for sure that he's going to work and he's going to be there? 
Dragon fire and ordinary fire does not kill white walkers and does not affect them. If Bran can work into people in the past, then why not work into the Mad King? There are many questions raised and left unanswered after this statement. And I am sure that Blood Raven would work and change his past and get Shira Seastar to marry him if that whole go back in time and war combo was possible. I am sure of that. So that's failure number one stated in the theory I'm reading. Next, the theory story continues, Bran went back much further to try and learn how mankind stopped the White Walkers the first time. But Bran arrived too late, so instead he inhabited the body of the legendary hero Bran the Builder and helped erect the wall to keep the White Walkers out. But as we know, this will seemingly not be a permanent answer either. This part isn't as well developed as the other sections, but the Age of Heroes and the Long Night came before recorded history, so we do not know when or how close certain events were to one another. It might be impossible for Bran to pinpoint the exact time of any of those things happened, which is why he would undershoot the actual Long Night. Well, this uh, whole point of the theory is so blurry and non-proven that it's actually fiction. In the fiction, because the whole made-up story that is presented as actual and possible scenario has no evidence whatsoever. Here you have ancient Stark ruler named Bran, which is expected for us to believe that his name is Bran because Bran worked into him, but not revealing his actual name, so his birth name may be other than Bran, he's named Bran or he's Bran and then he's Bran, I don't know. So this is really out of context and I cannot consider this to be any less serious than mumbo jumbo stuff. And that's failure number two. So which is why his next attempt would be to go back to the time before White Walkers existed to take uh, over the body of the first man the children of the forest turned into one via dragon glass to the heart. Either by trying to stop the children or stopping their war with men, the whole reason they made White Walkers. Bran would hope to end the White Walker threat forever. But as both Jojen and Three-Eyed Raven warned Bran repeatedly, you cannot remain in the past or in someone else's body for too long because you get stuck in there. As uh, it is quoted, it is beautiful beneath the sea, stay too long and you will drown. That's how Bran would get trapped in the first White Walker, who becomes the Night King, with all of Bran's incredible powers. The powers that let him raise the dead. Bran lives for thousands of years as him, which is why he can see himself in the vision and mark him. He then goes and he kills the Three-Eyed Raven who hid the truth from him. Even now the Three-Eyed Raven's comment about Bran will fly could be because the Night King is about to ride his new dragon Viserion, another example of prophecy not quite being what we expect. Which is failure number 3 and no chance for a fourth attempt. This is where the theory begins to get really, really wrong. There is too much unknown for one to say that. Firstly, he even tried, he worked into the body of that guy, which we do not know for sure if he it can be done, because Bran di didn't actually work into Holdor in the hold the door scene. And secondly, for this whole thing to work, we have to assume that he could be present at two timelines at the same time and not being in a trance that actually leads to a contradiction. So basically what this theory is telling us that Bran missed with going back to the time when White Walkers were defeated but pinpoints on the first attempt when the Night uh, King was created and uh, he does not he does not make a second attempt to go and see how the White Walkers were defeated, but instead goes back 
to the time when the Night King was created. That would be three time loops that have shaped everything that has happened. The theory might even account for why the Night King let John go at hard home and at episode 6 while waiting for Daenerys. Haha. <laughs> For the first time in millennia, Bran saw someone from his family and didn't want to kill him. He maybe even knew deep down somewhere inside where the real Bran still lives that Jon would eventually kill him at the end and end his nightmare once and for all. Now the story goes as piece of evidence for this theory being that when the first White Walker was created by the children, he gripped the tree the exact same way Bran gripped the roots beneath the ground while watching because Bran was expecting it in, in the moment because he was that man. And as more and more people have come on board with it, they have looked for other evidence supporting it. For example, have you noticed how the Night King's appearance has changed since Hard Home? Some people think that his newer version actually looks like Bran, proof that at some point he inhabited him. Uh, well, uh, Bran doesn't look uh, like uh, the Night King at all, in my opinion. The Night King is played by the actor who is the man that got stabbed with dragon glass. Also, the photoshopped picture with Bran and the Night King wearing the same sigil is another proof that this theory is really veiled and made for the sake of likes and uh, watch counts on YouTube and social media. So mm, now I will throw some light in the time travel stuff. So the time travel in Game of Thrones is on a fixed timeline which uh, means that you cannot change the past no matter how many times you go back in time. Just like in the movie The Time Machine where the, m the main character uh, uh, Dr. Alexander Hartigan after his fiance is dead, dedicates his life to building the time machine in which he succeeds, but uh, just to find out that no matter how many times he goes back uh, in time, he cannot save her and he cannot change the past. If he returns 100 times, he will witness the death of his wife 100 times in 100 different ways. As you can see in Game of Thrones, at least in the TV show, the same applies. There is a Russian physicist called Igor Novikov that uh, tried to solving the time travel paradoxes uh, uh, in his works in the 80s. Basically, what we are interested in here is self-consistency uh, principle which states that if uh, an event exists that would cause a paradox or any change, to the past whatsoever, then the probability of that event is zero. This theory thus contradicts itself and uh, so basically Brand cannot change the present uh, events by going to the past and working into somebody and doing some huge thing that changed dramatically everything and then come back. He also is in some state of a trance when the working and uh, time traveling so if he got lost for digging too deep in the past and got stuck, then how come he still consciously speaking and working again into someone else? But uh, would this story really end with everything being a time loop? This would be extremely disappointing. The Tree-Eyed Raven did say that ink is dry on the past uh, despite the past not being as concrete as we think, so that comment would fit this theory, but it would also feel like a letdown since it means no one had any free will in the story. This theory lies on sensationalism and not knowing enough for the Night King and the time travel and working abilities of those who possess them, since uh, George R. R. Martin has not yet uh, gotten to this point at all in his books. I doubt that this is uh, what he actually intends to do uh, with the uh, Bran storyline because his story is really a uh, lot down to earth and not far fetched like this theory. He may be a sci fi writer, but this is just not how he tells the stories. This is far from his style. 
this is more like uh, the Game of Thrones series style but still it sounds like mumbo jumbo and also why George Martin would uh, push six or seven books of story just to turn out that Bran is the Night King in some time travel mind fuckery well this that is totally not him he would do and end things far more satisfying and down to earth and yet unpredictable also this uh, has no real evidence supporting it most of uh, the above mentioned hypotheses are just uh, fiction there is just one more thing worth mentioning after the, the end season 7 the dire wolf formation that uh, the army of the dead uh, was marching in south this may once again be a clue about Bran being the Night King as uh, the people supporting this theory might claim but uh, this uh, may also mean that uh, that man that w got stabbed was Stark or it may be mean that uh, the Starks are next uh, to die I would say the most likely scenario is that Bran is going to succeed the Night King because he has all the necessary abilities to be the next one. Well, of course, if the current one fails in his quest, which is likely to happen with 99.9% .9 certainty, which uh, the Night King may has already seen with his uh, powerful abilities, but uh, we have no idea. We can only speculate that uh, he sees the future because uh, he uses uh, Jon Snow as a bait to uh, get uh, Daenerys dragon Viserion to uh, break the wall. The Game of Thrones series repeatedly show a spiral since the Night King was created. There is a belief that the Night King, the man who got turned into him, is actually a Stark. So he may use Bran with his special abilities to succeed him and continue his plan whatever it might be until Bran is in the same position again after a few thousand years and so on and so on. The death of Bran is most likely to be in, Winter in Winterfell when it falls to the Night King. He could be resurrected from the dead by a White Walker, not necessarily the Night King himself because as we see they seem to share the same power, the power to raise the dead. His abilities will be stronger and just like everybody being raised from the dead, he will be stronger but his intentions corrupted. Deeper analysis reveals that the others are a cyclic event in Westeros. They try to invade and take over all the known world but fail and regain power all over again for several thousand years when they try to do the same thing again and again they are bound to fail again and again, as it is usually in such binary plots. As the fire and ice are bound to fight each other in a never-ending cycle with no clear winner. The story is being written with the current characters and the current story for two possible reasons. The first one is that the White Walkers and the Dragons in the current story with all the magic will die and everything will be a world without magic, just a fantasy world with a never-ending Game of Thrones. And the second one, to show that the ice and fire, the life and death are always existent and will fight as in real life forever and ever until the end of time. For this proof can be found in the repeatedly showing Spyro at the place where the children of the forest created the Night King which is a symbol for repetition and a cycle that never ends. A cycle of events again and again shown in real life. The, the spiral is a symbol for a never ending cycle which is in binary stories like this one we are witnessing the story of ice and fire is likely to end with no clear victor because the idea is to show that something is continuous and inevitable in the same time. Battle of the opposites, the fire and the ice, the black and the white, the good and evil. The spiral is shown several times, first by the children of the, of the forest with stones when stabbing the poor man with dragon glass and several times by the Night King using dead bodies. 
In conclusion, I would like to say, the main proof holding this theory from falling apart now is that we don't know a shit about the actual Night King's intentions and true plans of the White Walkers at all. Oh yeah, and uh, in the books uh, there even is no Night King, there is only a Night King. The Night King is the 13th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch that found in the Haunted Forest, which is the forest just when you look uh, from the wall to the north, a cold woman with bright blue eyes, seemingly a female the White Walker. He took her to the other side of the wall and declared himself the Night King. For 13 years, the two ruled over the Brothers of the Night's Watch, performing human sacrifices.